it happened about a month ago. Uh, I saw part of a program on one of the TV channels. And what they showed was a young teenager hanging upside down with his legs tied to a rope from a ceiling. Okay. And uh, the poor soul was struggling very hard to uh, try to get himself released from that condition. And of course, after some struggle, then whether he gave up, he got exhausted, he got unconscious, I don't know. Okay, just like a pendulum, then he was hanging. There were people sitting around, probably his relatives. There was a very prominent looking, respectable person in that crowd, probably a peer or um, you know, somebody like that. And the comments was that that person evidently was suffering from some kind of ailment which I didn't get. I didn't see the whole program. Uh, and uh, that was supposed to be the treatment for whatever condition there was. And there was also a comment that in most cases people getting that particular treatment get unconscious. I don't know whether they get treated or not, that is something I don't know. Uh, but that shook me, not that I didn't know that this thing happened. I heard, I, I know that these things happen, uh, it's not uncommon. Uh, I had not seen it before, personally. Uh, I was aware that these things are not uncommon. Maybe something even more drastic than this happened in our society. But I saw it for the first time and that uh, particular side took me back to my own early childhood in a dusty village of mud houses, thatched roof. Uh, we used to get water from an irrigation channel through pitchers and uh, goat skins, which is common in the rural areas. Um, the fuel we used to have as common in our society like that was basically animal waste and uh, agriculture waste, again common thing. Uh, the light that we used to get, this my own light, I mean, you know, my own child. The light, the light we got would be either kerosene lamps or uh, mustard oil lamps. Okay. And I still remember that when I used to study with my book sitting on one of the trunks in the house, no chairs, um, in the morning my nostril will be full of this sood from the so the, you know, that's the, and I want you to think of the condition which where most of our country fellow citizens are still probably living, maybe 30 percent, 40 percent, 50 percent, they're still living there. Uh, that's where I was born and brought up. It so happens that it is only walking distance from a major educational institution, not very far and not very far from a provincial capital. But at that time, that's how the life was. And also, most of the people, I mean, most of deserted places were believed to be haunted. Okay? Every place at night in the darkness was believed to be haunted and uh, places like uh, cemetery and graveyards, they were believed to be haunted all the time. And uh, of course spirits and jinns and demons were, were there to help explain almost everything. 
Okay. I know recently I, I've been watching a UCLA or someplace movies. Uh, there's a lecture series on science, uh, religion, and magic. And uh, according to that, I mean, they used to be mixed up. Okay. So, and so naturally, so most of the diseases were believed to be also because of these things. And uh, in my own family, my brother, two, three years older to me, still living, uh, we were very young, of course, that time. Uh, he himself used to get certain kind of fits. Okay. Uh, those were not serious fits. Uh, he would just, from time to time, sit there and stare in the vacuum, oblivious to the surrounding. And naturally, according to the condition that I have described, it was not unnatural to think that he was, at that time, possessed by whatever you call them, jinns or spirits or demons, whatever they were. And so my duty as a younger brother would be to take my dad's bicycle, which I could hardly ride, I was young, and, and rush to the M. Molvi Saab, who was considered to be expert in dealing with this situation. And so, of course, he will come. Uh, he will try to do his usual things and would try to talk to the demons and things like that and sometimes threaten them, sometimes, you know, and sometimes even putting some burning st sticks between the fingers and uh, then the demons or the spirits would say, oh, he say, why do you want to tease or punish this young boy? He say, oh, uh, we are from such and such tree, a bear tree, which was commonly believed to be haunted at the edge of the town, not far from the cemetery. And we are from that place. And uh, he, one evening at dusk, our children were playing there. And uh, he trampled on them, so that's why. Okay. You see a kind of dialogue. And after some time, of course, whether he was exhausted from the DRC, he would go to sleep. Next day, he will be all right. And uh, luckily, of course, after some time, he came out of whatever that thing was, okay. So I'm just telling you my own experience, okay. Uh, naturally, that was uh, uh, nothing for me to challenge those kind of thing at that time. I was part of their society, okay.